If you have one meet, one need uh, that needs to be met tonight, that, that's in that. If you've got a thousand needs tonight, that's a part of that. Oh, you got a million needs tonight. Well, Pastor Tim, I got more than two. That's a part of the all. My God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. Did you see that? Boy, that's a good verse right there. We don't have a need, in other words, which God hasn't already what? Well, oh, amen. Through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God's already supplied all of our needs through and in Jesus Christ. Now, think of it this way. In other words, every problem we have, God has already solved. Every war we're waging, God has already won. Every battle we fight, God has already conquered. Every chain we have, God has what? Already broken, right? Every illness we incur, God is already healed. This is all past tense, by the way. Every disease we suffer, God has already delivered us from. Every debt, financial debt we owe, God has already canceled. Amen? How about that? Yeah. Every need we possess, God has already fulfilled. Every shortage we have, God has already supplied. And every curse of the enemy we experience, God has already removed. All of your needs and my needs are already met, past tense. Not present, not future. It's done. Jesus said the last words of Jesus on the cross were three. What? It is finished. Right? Paid in full is actually the greater translation of that. Paid in full. Everything's settled. Everything's, everything's met. Past tense. So what's the problem? What's the problem? Why? And this is where I believe Pastor Bob stirred this message in my heart. Because I'm reading the promises of God. And God supplied all my needs. Every one of my needs. My family. My church. Our country. Our culture. Our world. It's already. It's a done deal. In the eyes of God. It's finished. But there's a disconnect. Come on now. Between what I read in the Bible, the promises of God, and the reality in which I'm living, and my guess is the reality in which many of you are living. Certainly the world, amen, that we're living. So, so, so why is there a shortage of miracles manifesting in our lives? Why is there such a contrast between the promises of God and the, what, the fulfillment of those promises in our lives? The reason is this, because God, again, look at the verse. God has met all of our needs in Christ Jesus, but Christ Jesus is no longer in the earth. He's where? He's in heaven. He's in heavenly places. And guess where you and I live? We're not in heaven yet. Now, when you get to heaven, all your needs are going to be met, present tense, just by walking through the gate. Boom. You got it. There's no prayer in heaven. There's no, there's no prayer meeting in heaven. Think about that. It's, you got it all. The streets are gold. Right? All the food's free. There's no taxes. How about that? It's all in heaven, right? So the problem is, all of our needs are met in Christ Jesus, but Jesus Christ is in heaven in spiritual places, and you and I are where? Down in the earth in earthly places. Let me say it this way. God has met all of our needs, in other words, in the spiritual realm. All right? That's all right. But we live where? We live here in the physical realm. So the, the needs are met over here, but we're living over here. The question is, how do we get the things that are already ours from the spirit world into what? Into the physical world. All right. Now, many of you know I'm a professor, so I'm going to do some teaching here. Because I, I want you to see this visual with me that, that, that I believe the Holy Spirit gave me. All right, so here is, I'm going to draw two, uh, two circles, two rounds. All right. So here's the spirit round. Where God, Jesus, 
The angels led, right? And then here's what? Here's the, here's the earth and the physical realm. And there's the disconnect. And there's something within us as Christians go, this isn't right. We, we should be, we're promised a better life. We're promised that we read the Bible. You go up here like, man, I should be having this. this. I should have joy. I should have peace that passes all understanding. Come on now, right? I should be healed. I should be prosperous, not poor. I mean, just the needs, right? And we have a disconnect in our lives. Well, the question is, again, how do we get things from heaven to earth? How do we get things from the spirit realm into the physical realm? All right, now there's two ways. All right, here's the two ways. The two realms of reality, and uh, in particular, the two ways to receive, all right, from the spirit realm. Way number one, here it is. We receive from heaven, all right? We receive from heaven through faith. <laughs> All right, now, the source, obviously, of heaven is God. God's in heaven, and we receive from heaven through what? Through faith. Through faith. We're going to talk about that here in just a little bit. Look at this with me, Romans 4, 16. It's up on the screen. The promise, okay, comes by what? Comes by, say it with me, faith. So that it may be by grace and may be what? Guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring. Not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who have the faith of Abraham. That's you and me. For he is what? He's the father of us all. We know Abraham is the father of faith. faith. Right? So we, we receive from the spirit or we receive from God via the highway of faith. Look at Galatians 3.14 with me. God redeemed us in order, oh, this is good stuff here, that the blessing given to Abraham might come to who? The Gentiles, which is us, not born in Israel, born in a Jew, through who? Through Christ Jesus, so that, here it is, say it with me, by faith, we might what? Receive the promise of who? The Spirit. Who is it that burst this thing in our hearts to believe for salvation, deliverance, healing, needs met, prosperity, relationships? What is, it's the Spirit that stirs that up, quickens the promises of God to us, right? But how, all right, how does God, the Holy Spirit, get us to receive or help us to receive from heaven, the things of God that are already ours. Here it is. By faith. By faith. Uh, and we, we, we're faith people, amen? amen? We're called to what? Walk by faith, not by sight. The just, Romans 1, 17, shall live by faith. We're faith people. We understand this. I understand we're preaching to the choir. But i got to remind us of this. Sometimes we got to get back to the elementary truths of the gospel. There's a disconnect why we're not receiving. Because everything from God, from heaven, comes only one way and on the highway of what? Faith. So if we're not in faith, what happens? The blockade goes up. Right? The blo it blocks the blessing. It blocks what God has already promised us is ours. So we have to open up what? We have to open up the highway of faith. We have to stir our faith, right? We're going to talk about that here in just a little bit. So that's how we receive from heaven, from the spirit realm. But there's another guy living in the spirit realm. There's another power that also dwells in the spirit realm, the unseen realm of the spirit. And that's the devil. That's your enemy. That's Satan. That's Lucifer, right? So the second way we receive, look at this now. The second way we receive from the spirit realm is what? From hell. Through what? Through fear. Okay, now watch this. All right. 
Now the source of fear and hell is who? The devil. God, heaven, faith. The devil, hell, fear. Everything you and I and every person on our planet, whether they acknowledge this or not, regardless of religion, regardless of atheist, agnostic, Buddhist, or Baptist, right, is what you are receiving from either or one of these two realms, one of these two sources in the spirit realm. You're either receiving from God, from heaven, through faith, or people are receiving from what? From the devil, from hell, through fear, right. for the highway of fear. Now, I, I taught our, at our church, faith and fear are the same coin. They operate the exact same way. The laws of faith and the laws of fear, Pastor Mike, are exactly the same. They're just inverted. It's heads or tails. Do you want heads? Then operate by faith. If you want tails, then operate by fear. Either way, you're getting a quarter. <laughs> Either way, you're going to receive something. Does that make sense? Right. You look at the people in your life. Just inventory the people in your life, and you can determine, are they walking by faith? Are they living by faith? <clears throat> or are they walking by fear and living by fear? It's one or the other. You can't have it both ways. Right. So they either receive, watch this now, the blessing of God or what? Or the curse of the enemy based on what? Faith or fear. That's how every person, including Christians, receive from the spirit realm. That's it. That's it. That, it this is how this is how we we withdraw, we bring the things of God into our lives through faith, and watch this now, and you bring the things of God, or excuse me, you bring the things of the devil into your life by fear. Well, I just know I'm going to get cancer. Yep, everybody in my family got cancer. I just know, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid, uh, Pastor Dan, I just know I'm fearful I'm going to get cancer. And, and two weeks later, guess what you got? You got cancer. Because what you do? You opened up the highway of fear. Yes. And the devil had cancer over here and he just went, whoop! And you got it. This is how it works. Now, <clears throat> faith and fear again operate the same way. How does faith come? Faith comes by yeah. hearing. Hearing by the word of God. By what God says, faith is birth and increases, right? <clears throat> how does fear come? Fear comes by hearing <clears throat> And hearing by the word of the devil. The devil talk to you. He'll talk to you. He'll, he'll talk you right into the grave. He'll talk you right into an, an affair. He'll talk you right into bankruptcy. He'll talk you right into the loony bin. I'm serious now. This is reality stuff. You're not going to hear this kind of preaching on YouTube. Because this isn't tickle your tenders. Right? They won't even mention the name devil in most churches. They won't teach about it. And that's why they're sick. That's why they're broke, busted, and disgusted. Because my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. See, what you and I don't know, the devil operates in what? In the darkness. In the deception. See, he doesn't want, we're lifting, we're lifting the, the, we're turning on the lights now. We're lifting up the banner. Yeah. We're removing the curtain off the enemy. He's already, the enemy's already defeated. He's a loser, capital L. Right there on his forehead. He knows he's a loser. Most people don't. And all he can do is lie to you. The Bible calls him the father of lies. Now here's a trick I learned many years ago when the devil starts talking to me. I just recognize it's him talking. He's trying to birth fear in my heart so that he can give me a curse. And I think it is, well, if, if God calls him the father of lies, Pastor Bob, then it's impossible for him to tell the truth. So if he tells me you're going to die, I said, well, that's not right. I must, go in, I must be going to live. That's right. 
You're going to get sick. Well, that's a lie. I'm going to be well. You're going to you're going to be a pauper all your life. Well, that's a lie. I must be I must be going to be prosperous. Just flipping on it. It freaks him out. He's like, what? what? Right? You just tell the devil, thank you for that. Thank you for that report. And then just what? Flip it. Flip it. And the minute you flip it, you flip it over to faith. <laughs> then you can receive from the highway of heaven. Everybody get blessed tonight? Amen. Are you seeing some things? How many want to receive from God? How many want to receive a miracle? Manifest a manifestation. The message is manifesting Amen. miracles. Hallelujah. Not just preaching about it. We're going to have an altar call, by the way, here in just a, just a few minutes. I'm not going to preach long, believe it or not. At least that's my, not my goal. All right. We're going to give you an opportunity to come up and receive prayer to manifest miracles. You got to meet tonight. We're going to agree in what? In faith as touching. And we're going to open up the highway. And God's going to what? God's going to touch you. Heal you. Deliver you. Set you free.
Jesus was pleased, as we'll see here in just a little bit, that she received. She, she was one of maybe hundreds of thousands in that crowd that day, and she was the only one that got the miracle. But she was trembling with fear. She told him the whole truth about her situation. And watch this. He said to her, last sentence, Daughter, your faith is... Okay, let's sit down. Daughter, your... Faith. Faith has what? Healed you. See the power in the spirit realm manifesting in her earthly life in the physical realm through what? Through faith. Your faith has healed you. And Jesus said, go in peace. Be free from your suffering. Powerful. Hallelujah. Now I want to draw this woman's condition out before we get to the shouting part. Let's, let's talk about the storms in her life. This woman's condition was serious. She had four, not minor needs, major needs. Four of them in this scripture. Mark 5, 24. Number one, she had a positional need. If you're taking notes, this is a good place to write them down. She had a positional need. Mark 5, 25 says, A large crowd followed and pressed around Jesus. So here she is. Here's Jesus walking through her town. And a crowd shows up, hundreds, maybe even thousands. And she's at the back of the crowd. There's Jesus up there. And she's got this need. You know what? Sometimes manifesting a miracle isn't always easy. Many times there's going to be a blockade. There's going to be a battle between you and Jesus. She, she, was, she was outnumbered, in other words, by people that wanted to get around and pressing around Jesus. The crowd was tight. The disciples said, well, all these people are touching you. Jesus. How can you say something? Of course some people touch you. How many of you have ever been in a large crowd, you know, a stadium, ballgame, whatever, you're just kind of packed in there like sardines and kind of walking through the gates? You know? That's the picture I said. Yeah. So there's a crowd. There's a positional need. She's here. He's there. And she's got to get to Jesus. Number two, she had a physical need. Mark 5, 25, a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for not one year, not two years, not four years, six years, eight years, or ten years. A woman had been subject to bleeding for how long? Twelve years. Bleeding out of her female organs. Issue of blood. Hemorrhaging. This is a sick woman with a serious need. Right? She had a physical need. She needed a physical miracle. <clears throat> Not only that, number three, she had an emotional need. This is amazing. Most people skip over this. Mark 5, 26. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors. Now, there's nothing wrong with going to the doctor. Please don't read that into this. The emotional need that she was battling was this. She went to people who she thought was going to help her. And they didn't. They couldn't. They tried. Their modern medicine for the day, talking about 2,000 years ago, I don't know what that was, but they no doubt tried. And, and notice the word uh, doctors is plural. <laughs> she didn't just go to one. She went to at least two, because that's plural. She might have went to 15. Try that doctor, didn't help. Try that doctor, try that doctor. 12 years seeing doctors. She went all over, right? Hoping that this man, this woman, this clinic, this surgeon could help me. And everyone's, oh yeah, 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 I can help you come see me. And they dropped the ball. How many of you ever been told by a friend or a well-meaning person, a physician. All right, we can do this. But they didn't. It doesn't wound you. It wounds you physically. It wounds you where? Right here. Emotionally. Six and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. The truth is, bones take eight weeks to heal. Sometimes a broken heart can take years. This woman was... You could feel the depression emotionally. Emotionally depressed. Twelve years going to doctors. Twelve years. Sitting in the emergency room, right? 
just the emotional trauma, the emotional need she had. Number four, the fourth need she had, talking about the woman's condition. I mean, she was hurt. She had what? A financial need. Mark 5, 26 says she had spent all. Someone say all. all. She had spent all she had. How much money did she have in the bank? She had spent it all. Pastor Danny. I mean, that's, a, that, that's about as bad as it gets financially, people. Because she didn't have two pennies to rub it. She didn't have one penny. She spent it all. Right? And what was her condition? Now, here's the thing. It goes from bad to worse. Yet, instead of getting better, she what? She grew worse. Worse physically, worse emotionally, and worse financially. I mean, you know what? You think your situation is bad tonight? I doubt that any one of us have it like this woman had. I mean, she was in a bad place. She was in a really low state. Bad state. Not for one year, two years, seven years, or nine years. Twelve years! What she wouldn't have done for a miracle service like this. <laughs> At about year two, right? Hallelujah. Twelve years she suffered. But what happened? Well, <coughs> something happened in her life. And the problems, watch this now, the problems pushed her to the one person that could help her. I love this. Don't let your problems keep you from God. Let your problems what? Push you to God. I'm amazed. I know Pastor Bob and Pastor Mike will probably say this. Amazed at the people just right outside our door that are hurting and meeting tonight. And all they need to do is come to the house of God. Show up on Sunday morning to church. Show up on, on, on Wednesday night, Thursday night to church. And, and God can heal you. God can comfort you. God can encourage you, the family of God. And guess what they don't do? They let their problem keep them on their couch. <laughs> and they go from what? From better to worse. Or from worser to worser. That's such a word. Right? It's frustrating as a pastor. We're like, you know, God can meet that need. Get in the house of God. Right? Their problem keeps them from God. Keeps them from their miracle. Rather than pushing them to their miracle. That's what this woman did. There are seven steps we can learn tonight. How to manifest a miracle from this woman. Seven steps real quick. I want to share them with you. And I believe if you and I will learn and apply these seven steps, regardless of the need, we can manifest a miracle in our lives tonight. At any time. Are you ready for this? Hallelujah. Because we know God's a chain breaker. Seven steps to manifesting a miracle. I said all that to say this. Step number one. Here it is. What'd she do? She heard about Jesus. Mark 5, 27 simply says this. This woman heard about Jesus. Now, how did this woman hear about Jesus? We don't know. We're not told. Maybe it was a friend. Maybe it was a co-worker. Maybe it was a family member that said, you know this Jesus guy that we're hearing about? He can heal people. Maybe he can heal you. Someone told her about Jesus. And I think, you know what? Why we don't see as many miracles as we're promised is we're not telling anybody we serve a miracle God. Amen, Pastor Tim. I believe that. <laughs> yeah. You'd be surprised at how many churches preach that miracles are over. This man right here was told by someone, the days of miracles, signs, and wonders are over. Well, if you believe the days of miracles, signs, and wonders are over, then guess what you're not going to get? You're not going to get a miracle from heaven. Someone told her about Jesus. My friends, this is why we have to tell people about our God. We have to just be bold. So, you know, you've got a need. You know what? Jesus can meet that need. I believe God, God's got a miracle for you, sister. You just come, come to church. Let's let the man of God pray for you. Let's get around. Let's believe God. Step one to receiving a miracle is 
She didn't know Jesus. She wasn't a disciple. She was just an ordinary woman with four extraordinary needs. And someone just told her, you know, honey, maybe it was a nurse. You know, honey, sweetheart, I know you've been suffering for 12 years. There's this miracle worker named Jesus. Step one of manifesting miracles is someone's got to tell them about Jesus. We have to tell our friends and family members, and we need to be bold about it. And unashamed to be unashamed, amen, that we serve the God of miracles. Now, why is that important? That she heard about Jesus? Why is hearing step number one to receiving and manifesting a miracle? Here it is again, Romans 10, 17. Because faith comes by hearing, and hearing by what? The word of God. Or the word about God. We used to have testimony services on Sunday night at my, my dad's church growing up. We'd have our singing, and then he would preach. He'd just be like, testimony time. You got a testimony about how God be? Come on up. And what were people doing? They were just telling on God. They were just bragging about how God, God met this physical need. God met this emotional need. God healed my marriage. God healed my kids. God brought my wayward teenager back from the drug addiction. And bragging on God. That's all, they, all this person did. It's this person, whoever he or she was, told this woman about God, and it birthed what? It birthed faith in her heart. See, when you tell someone what God's done for you, it births faith in their heart. It stirs up faith. It opens up the highway for them to receive, see? <coughs> Don't remain silent. That's why the devil wants us to shh. Remain silent. And you know what the devil wants to do? Because he's talking over here. He's telling about people how bad it is, and it's going to get worse. Yeah, you got you got cancer in the, in the left cheek. It won't be long before you get cancer in the right cheek. That's how the devil operates, right? He's always talking. And then he works through people that are bound by fear to reinforce that. It's no wonder people are sick. And and, and then major need to. Number one, first step to manifest a miracle, she heard about Jesus. What are you doing tonight? You're hearing about Jesus. Hallelujah. What are you going to do every night this week? You're going to hear about Jesus. You're going to hear a message from the Word of God. Not the Reader's Digest. Or Sermon Central. A Word of God that God puts on your heart. Hallelujah. Step number two. After hearing about Jesus, she thought about Jesus. I love this. Mark 5, 28 says... She thought, if I can just touch his clothes, I will be healed. So she heard about Jesus, because faith comes by hearing, but then she thought in her head, wow, hey, I, I heard him, he healed this person of that, and he healed that person of this, maybe He'll heal me. Maybe if I touch Jesus, he'll heal me, right? You've got to think it. You gotta hear it, and then you gotta what? You gotta think it. Why? Because Proverbs 23 and 7 says this. As a man or a person, don't want to leave out the females. As a man thinks in his heart, what? So is he. We have to watch. The thoughts that come in our heads. You can't keep a bad thought from coming in your mind. We live in a filthy, evil thought ridden world. Just turn on the television and what do you get? You get a bunch of bad thoughts. I mean, it's just negative, negative news. I can't even watch the night news anymore. It's just negative. I mean, my land, you'd think Armageddon hit. Come on now. I mean, regardless of the news outlet you listen to, I don't care what it is. I guarantee you what they're talking about is all the bad stuff that's happening in the world. And all the bad stuff that's happening in America. And all the bad stuff, all the bad stuff, all the bad stuff, all the bad stuff. What is the bad stuff? Here it is. Listen to me. Fear. It's the devil. Right? And she thought, what? A positive thought. You can't keep a, a bad thought 
from coming into your head, but you can keep it from staying there. Someone said, you can't, you can't stop the birds from flying over your head, but you can stop them from building a nest in your head. Come on now. Come on. We need to understand bad thoughts. We're going to live. Jesus said it, John 16, 33, in this world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. All right? Don't, we're not living in denial. We're not denying that you got cancer. We're denying that the cancer stays there. We're not denying your marriage is a wreck. But we're denying that it's going to stay there. We're not denying that your teenager's addicted to crack cocaine. We're just denying the fact that he's going to live there in the alley for the remainder of his life. Right? She thought, hey, what Jesus did for others, what God did for others, he'll do for me. Hallelujah. God's no respecter of persons. If he'll do it for one, he'll do it for two, including you. I get stirred up. See, we don't need to get we don't need to get jealous of one another's breakthrough or blessing. You know what we should do? We should clap all the louder and say, Hallelujah, brother. God gave you a million dollars. Bless God Almighty, he'll give me one too. <laughs> and maybe even two. Because really, you know what? Until you can applaud and be grateful for what God's done in someone else's life, God watches that. God, I'm telling you, God watches that. Well, my, my church is exploding. I got 15,000 members. I'm up. I'm going, hallelujah. Praise God. I'm believing for 30. <laughs> Amen. Hey, we got big dreams over there at the time. Hallelujah. Come on now. Amen. What God will do in Korea, he'll do in Pekin. What God will do in Africa, he'll do in Morton. What God will do in Australia, he'll do in Bloomington normal. He no respect your persons. All he needs woo, 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 is faith. But it comes by hearing and it comes by thinking. See, you have to think your way there. And believe your, you have to believe it in your heart. That's faith. And you have to think in your head before you man, manifest it. Come on now. Some of us will live this. We are, I'm preaching to the fire for most of you. But we got to know this. She thought about Jesus. Number three. Then she what? Then she said about Jesus. Matthew 9, 21, 21 says, She said to herself. Mark 5 said she thought. That would be true. But Matthew says, she said. Well, what did she do, Pastor Tim? The Bible is in contradiction. No, it's not. Couldn't she do both? Most of you won't even let the thought finish the sentence before you say it. Especially if you're a woman. Oh! <laughs> See, my wife's not here tonight, so I got to... Are you recording this, Pastor Joe? <laughs> Delete that, will you? <laughs> Come on now, right? You think it is out your mouth. Hallelujah. I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> you know I'm telling you the truth. Come on now. The thought isn't even finished and you're already speaking it. That's what she did. She thought first, hey, I could be healed. And then she said, I could be healed. And I think all the way to the revival meeting that day at whatever city this was in, she was thinking, if I could just touch him, I'll be healed. And she thought, if I touch him, I'll be healed. If I could just touch him, I'll be healed. If I could just get to Jesus, I'll be healed. I think she did thought. And she said, she thought. She said, she thought. She said, she thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Job 22, 28 says, Thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be what? Established unto thee. Established unto you. Well, we're word of faith people, amen? What does that mean? It means you better watch your mouth. You better watch your mouth because you're going to get exactly what you said. Well, I just know I'll get sick. You know, it's about spring's coming, all these all these flowers and all these trees, are, but I, my allergies going to start kicking up any second. You wake up tomorrow morning with swollen eyes, swollen glands. Yep, I got it. 
Well, it's no wonder you got it, sister, because you what? You confess the curse. Come on now, haven't we all done this? Yeah. I've done it. It's easy. It's easy to, to, to get you, but you got to stop. You say, God, just repent. Say, God, I, I apologize for that allergy comment. In the name of Jesus, I will not ever have an allergy problem again. Right. According to what you say, it shall be done unto you. And she said, she spoke her healing before the healing manifested, right? Mm -hmm. Speak your miracle. Think your miracle. Believe your miracle. Believe it, think it, speak it. Believe it, think it, speak it. Believe it, think it, and speak it. Amen. And it begins to what? Watch this now. It's on its way. It's on its way. It's on its way. From heaven into your life. Step number four. She came to Jesus. Mark 5, 27 says, She came up behind Jesus in the crowd. She didn't get to the Jesus Christ miracle crusade and say, Well, there's 30,000 people between me and Jesus. I, I guess it's just not God's will to heal me. Isn't that what we do? I, I, you know, it's it just too hard. You know what that woman did? I don't know what she did, but I picture she was, bless God, I'm not going home. <laughs> <laughs> she got the high heels out. <laughs> she was moving people out. She was not going to, she probably crawled. Excuse me. I got to get to the man of <laughs> Twelve years she was sick, bleeding and hemorrhaging. What would you do? I'm getting to Jesus. No one's going to stop me. I don't care if there's 30,000 people there. And I'm going to touch him. I'm going to get him. You know what? I think part of the time we don't receive is we don't really want to receive that enough. I mean, we're not really serious enough about our miracles. You know why? And Pastor Bob can give testimony to this. You know why people in Africa receive miracles? <coughs> A lot more than we do in America. It's because they want. What do we do? Well, we just kind of. Well, we'll go to the doctor and we'll do this and we'll we'll try that, and we're living in the natural, and we never even go to God. Well, if you live in the natural, you'll get natural results, right? But if you go to the supernatural, you get what? Supernatural results. Now, God many times will use natural means and natural people to bring supernatural results. Amen? So please don't hear me that God doesn't use natural things and natural people. He can when you recognize He's your source. Amen? Well, God wanted me to have a job. He'd just have the employer call me. No, sister, you get your resume together, you get your degree, and then you apply. And then let God work out the interview. Does that make sense? You do what you do. Let God do what God can do. And she what? She did what she could do. She came to Jesus. Now, why is that important? I love this. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. <clears throat> Jesus gives us the invitation, even tonight. Come to me. All. Someone say all. All. Oh, that's you. That's me. All who are weak. And heavy burdened. And I will give you rest. The word rest means shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken. All we have to do is what? Come to Jesus. What would you do tonight? You came to Jesus. Amen. You didn't come to a man. You came to Jesus. Well, Pastor Tim, what are you talking about? What is, listen to this, what is the body of Christ in the earth today? The church. What does the Spirit of God fill today? The church. So when you come to church, you're coming to Jesus. Well, I don't need to go to church. I guess you don't need a miracle, sister. Well, I don't need, I don't need, no, 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 you do. 
That's why you got five appointments with doctors this next week. You got a need. You just don't have the faith to go to God with that need. So you're operating in fear and you're going to get the curse. See, when you and I come to the church, when we come to the people of God, the body of Christ, we're coming to Jesus. And the same anointing that anointed Jesus of Nazareth 2,000 years ago to break every chain, heal every, every sickness, cure every disease, is now in you and in me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's good. This is important stuff. She came to Jesus. You came to Jesus. And the invitation is, come on. All who are heavy laden, come. Come to Jesus. And he'll what? He'll give you rest. He'll give you shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken. In other words, every need, every need will be met. Glory be to God. That's why, you know what? That's why that Holy Spirit in you, you know, on these, these, uh, these conferences or Sunday morning, there's just a pull. It's like, get to church. Get to prayer, get to Bible study, get to small group. There's just something about why is that? Because the Holy Spirit knows that it's when we get around the people of God, the body of Christ, that what the faith highway ends up. We come to Jesus. Step number five. Step number five. She touched Jesus. Mark 5, 27, 28. She came up behind Jesus in the crowd and touched his cloak. Because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Matthew 14, 36 says this. All, someone say all. all. That's you. That's me. All who touched Jesus were healed. Amen. Hallelujah. Boy, that was right there. Hallelujah. All who touched Jesus were healed. All who came to Jesus and reached out the hand of faith, stretched out the arm of faith, all were healed. Hallelujah. Listen to this now. Everybody was healed in the church. Everybody was healed at the crusade. Everybody was healed at the conference. Everybody was healed at the revival. Not one person left Jesus who touched him that was. Now there were people there who didn't touch him. And they went home sick. They went home having a need. But all who what? Touch Jesus. We're healed. How do we touch Jesus? How do we come up behind him and touch the hem of his garment? <clears throat> through faith. Through faith. By coming to him through faith. And then what? By coming up to a man of God after a service like this and lining up here and saying, I believe your hand can be the hand of Jesus on my forehead or on my back or on my knee. And God can use your hand to be the hand of Jesus that touches me, that heals me. Does that, does that make sense? Yes. Oral Roberts laid hand on thousands, thousands of people. It wasn't Oral Roberts' hands that healed, healed people. It was the touch of Jesus' hands on Oral's hands that touched people. Hallelujah. Does that make sense? So we don't get a, our eyes on a human being, but we, use, we understand God uses human beings as instruments, what? To manifest the things in the spirit realm into the physical realm. I'm believing for $1,000. I got a $1,000 need in my life. Well, praise God. Jehovah Jireh has never written me a check for $1,000 or for $100 or for a dollar. God doesn't go around with his checkbook and writing people checks. <laughs> never will you receive a check that says, Bank account heaven, Jehovah Jireh, he. <laughs> Watch this now. But he'll tap a man or a woman of God on the shoulder and he'll say, hey, go up to that person and write a thousand dollar check to them. Just bless them. God will use people to write checks. God will use people to give you a, a jacket, a clothes, clothes, a pair of shoes. Does that make sense? And you need to understand and have the wherewithal and the wisdom of all to understand and recognize 
that that person that God tapped on the shoulder wasn't the source. He was just the means. You give the glory to God. You thank Pastor Bob. Thank you, Pastor Bob, for that thousand dollar check. I was believing God for that. Well, I kind of felt that, you know, God kind of wanted you. That's how it works. So to God be all the glory for the great things he's done what? In us and through us. Church. That's how God works. There might be a person, I can't tell you how many times I've, you know, you've been led. You see people that, you know, maybe down the back at work or something like that, and, and the Holy Spirit will say, been asking if you can pray for them. And I'll pray and I'll heal them. Because they've been asking God all week, God heal my back. God heal my back. And, and, and the Holy Spirit will go, hey, see that person over there with that bad back? Go over and ask them if you can lay hands and, and, and pray for them and, and, and heal them. And you'll go over there and say, you know, I, I don't know you, but I believe Jesus can heal and he's healed me. Can I just pray for you? And they're like, well, sure. And you lay hands on them, and, and in the name of Jesus, be healed, and they're healed. Why is that? Because they touched Jesus. Amen. Well, Pastor Tim, are you calling me Jesus? I'm calling you the body of Christ. I'm calling you what the Bible calls you. We are the hands, the feet, the ears, the checkbooks of God in the earth today. That's right. If God's going to work America, it's going to work through you and through me. In some way, shape, or form. This is good news. This is good stuff. So she touched Jesus. Number six. She was healed by Jesus. The, man, the miracle manifested. Mark 5, 29 says this. Immediately. Oh, I love that. Immediately her bleeding stopped. And she felt in her body that she was what? Free from her suffering. Mark 5, 33 says, the woman, knowing what had happened to her, she knew she was healed, right? Came and fell at Jesus and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. What'd she do? She didn't, she didn't lie. <laughs> she came to Jesus. She, she no doubt told him that she was hemorrhaging for 12 years, going to all the doctors. I mean, that's how Mark knew it. That's how Mark knew it. That's how Matthew knew it. This story is in all four Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Now Mark is the one we're using tonight, all right? How did they know all the details of this? Because they were standing there listening. Now Luke wasn't, but the other three were. Luke got it probably from Mary, the mother of Jesus, who was no doubt standing close to Jesus. All four Gospels have this, this, this woman in it. She's unnamed can't wait to meet her in heaven. <laughs> I like her. She was healed. She came forward and she gave testimony. Boy, that's important. When we receive a blessing from God, we need to acknowledge it. God healed me. God delivered me. God comforted me. God restored my, my relationship with my wayward father. We need to give testimony. When God shows up in your life, brag about it. Brag about it. It seals the deal. It seals it. And she told the truth. She was healed. Point number seven as I close. Oh, wait, wait, wait. wait I, got, I got another one. Oh, scrum, scrum with it. Exodus 15, 26. Here's the good news. It says this. I am the Lord who heals who? You. We serve a healing God. We serve a healing Jesus. That's in the, in the miracle working business. Acts 10, 38. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with what? With who? The Holy Spirit and power. And he, Jesus, went around doing good and healing all. Someone say all. Oh. See, we're all through the Bible. <laughs> that's you, that's me. Healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. So watch this now. Who put the sickness on the woman? Yeah. It was the devil. God doesn't make people sick. Oh, God just put this, God just gave me a diabetes. He didn't. Oh, God just gave me lupus. Oh, oh God just, just, just gave me liver disease. Oh, God just, God just caused me to go bankrupt. It must be his will. No, 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 no. It's this guy. It's the devil. See, 
Under the power of the devil. This woman was under the power of the devil. But how many of you know there's a greater power? She was under the, the devil has power. Did you see that? She was under the power of the devil. The devil is powerful. He will ruin your life. Matter of fact, Jesus said he's come to steal, kill, and destroy your life. He's got the power to do it. We see that, do we not? We see the devil running rampant in our world today. Why? Because people are under his power. But we're under God's power. <laughs> and if they come under God's power and stop walking by fear and start walking by faith, guess what they'll get? They'll get freed. This woman became freed from all her suffering. Hallelujah. Praise God. Why? Because the man of God, Jesus, was anointed with the power of God to do good and to heal sicknesses and to meet all needs. Step number seven, as I close. She was, this is, a, I love this. She was applauded by Jesus. She was praised by Jesus. She was affirmed by Jesus. We don't know how many people were in the crowd that day, Pastor Mike. There were no doubt hundreds, maybe thousands. And for all we know, she was the only one that walked out of the miracle. And Jesus was like, Hallelujah. Praise myself. <laughs> right? He, he was happy about it. I love this. Mark 5, 34 says, Jesus said to the woman, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in shalom. Go in peace. Nothing missing, nothing broken. And be free from your suffering. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, sister. Praise God. We serve a God that is more anxious to manifest miracles than we are to receive them. God's more ready to heal you and your friends and your family than we are to be healed. God's more ready to prosper your socks off than we have socks to supply. Amen. Hallelujah. Matthew 9, 22 says, Jesus turned and saw her. Take heart, daughter. She said, Jesus said, your faith has healed you. And the woman was healed from that moment. It was a right now miracle. She was healed from that moment. John 10, 10, let me remind you. The thief come up but for the steel can destroy, but Jesus said, I have come that you, someone say me. Me. You, my friend, my brother, my sister. So that you may have life and have it more what? Abundantly. Abundantly. That's why Jesus came. To give us, watch this now. Oh, this is good. Holy Ghost, thank you. To give us life, the devil came to what? Give us death. Jesus said, I'm not come to kill, steal, or destroy your life. I'm not come to curse you. I've come to free you. I'm not come to make you sick. I've come to make you well. I'm not come to, to make you discouraged or depressed or downhearted. I've come to what? Encourage you, to edify you, to bless you. Right? That's why he came. 3 John 2. The beloved disciple said this of the desire and will of God for every one of our lives. Beloved, I wish, some translations say desire, I wish above all things, say all things, all I things. desire above all things. In other words, he's saying this is my top priority for you. My can I break it down and say it like we would say? This is what my greatest wish is for you. Now, wishes are kind of, but that's what's in our vernacular. I, I just have, you know, best wishes. This is God's best wish for us. He says, this is my number one top priority for you. Are you ready for this? This is good stuff. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou, that's you, that's me, mayest prosper, that's financial prosperity, and be in health, that's physical prosperity, even as thy soul prospers. Soul is emotional prosperity. Now go back to the woman. Remember her condition? She had a physical need. She had an emotional need. And she had a financial need. 
Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper financially, be in health, financial prosperity, healing wealth, and, 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 and what? Even as thy soul prospers, your emotions prosper. Where did, I don't know this for sure, but I'm going to find it out. Bless God when I get to heaven. But I have a hunch. I have a hunch. How did John know that? How did John know that Jesus' desire, God's desire, is for us to prosper physically, emotionally, and financially? Could it be, again, I'm not saying it is, but could it be that Jesus turned to the woman and said, Sister, I wish above all things that you prosper. Sister, I wish above all things that you be in hell. Sister, I wish above all things that your soul prospers. And she would have known my physical need, my emotional need, and my financial need was Jesus' greatest desire. I don't know. I'm not putting it in the Bible. I'm not saying that happened. But John knew that Jesus' greatest desire was to prosper us in those three ways. Physically, emotionally, and financially. How many of you remember having a need about an hour ago? You raised your hand. Remember that thing? I would almost guarantee the vast majority of your needs tonight and my needs tonight are either physical, financial, or emotional. And it's God's desire, above all things, to meet that need. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Above all things, He wants you to prosper. Be in hell, even as thy soul prospers. That's what this woman received immediately. All her needs were met. Every one of her needs. She didn't leave that, that, uh, that conference, that, that spring victory assembly conference, with one need. Jesus supplied all her needs. Amen. Now, here's the thing. The Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit that healed that woman, the same anointing is here tonight. It's here this week throughout this conference. And I want to encourage you not to leave tonight or any night this week with a need. Just be like this woman saying, you know what, bless God, I ain't leaving. I am going to get. I've showed you the paradigm. I've showed you how to get things from heaven into the earth, from God's throne into your life through faith. If you'll just believe God, if you'll just walk out these seven steps, you know what I believe? I believe with all my heart your, man, your miracle will manifest tonight. 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 So let's just do it. Can we do this? Can we just believe God that he's going to do something in our midst and in your life tonight? Whatever those needs are, let's just believe that through the Holy Spirit and the anointing of God, that God's going to supply every single one of your needs.